Today on Grim 3D, we're going to give the monster a little bit of speed. Stick around. So if you go back through my monster D9500 playlist, you'll see first of all that originally I had some pretty serious issues with the D9 monster. So this is actually the first print I got off of it. And I just did regular settings, whatever it told me, right out of the box, and that's what I got. Yes, this is supposed to be a Benchy. Since then, I've done quite a few upgrades to the monster. One of the things that I did right off the bat to solve this problem was that I slowed it way, way down. Okay, I both slowed down print speeds and I slowed down stuff like print jerk and acceleration and that kind of stuff. After doing all of the modifications that you can see in my playlist, I printed this. And this is just a tray, same kind of speeds that I've been using to solve the problem of this massive layer shift after layer shift after layer shift. The problem that I have now is that this tray right here took well over 24 hours to print. It's really not that big. I'm using a 0.6 nozzle. The monster should really print faster than that. And I know that a little bit of the reason why it took so long to print is that this is very thin, which means that the outside perimeters, which are usually printed slowly to make a nice surface, was most of what it was printing all the time. And on the bottom, it's pretty thin too, which means it was either printing a, a huge bottom layer or a huge top layer, but I got the D9 to print big stuff. It's a big printer. That's why I got the monster in the first place. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna mess with the speed settings on the D9 monster, try to make something like this take less time. With all the modifications I've made to this printer, I think I can push it a little bit faster. <clears throat> As my baseline, I printed this calibration cube so this calibration cube's print speed, overall print speed was 30 millimeters per second. The infill was 40 millimeters per second. The inner wall, 30. The initial layer, 15. The outer wall, 15. And my acceleration's at 500, and my jerk is at two millimeters per second. Now, throughout this, I'm probably not gonna mess too much with the acceleration and jerk. Not for a while. What I wanna do is I try and wanna try to get the speeds up. The big problem that I had in the past was that the bed would switch directions so fast that it would cause the Y-axis motor to skip steps. That's where my layer shifts were coming from. So two things I gotta watch out for here. I wanna pump it up until maybe I start seeing layer shifts again, see what kind of speed I can get out of that on this same kind of print. So I'm gonna actually take the speed and ramp it up till maybe it starts skipping, and then I'm gonna pull it down about 80%, Give it some weight, see where I'm at. If I end up right back here, oh well. It's just gonna have to take forever to print anything, which kind of sucks. But I did hear from Moon's Motor a while back. I, I contacted them about the specs on the motors that were on my machine. And one of the responses I got from the technician at Moon's Motor was that the motors that my D9 is using are pretty old. They're old, old stock. And that the motors that they're making now actually have much better stats. Basically what he was telling me was that for the same amount of current running through the motor, you get considerably more torque. If I end up right back here, a new motor might be in the works. You can get one the same size apparently, new model, more torque, should make a difference. I'm gonna jack up the speeds on this at about, I don't know, five millimeters per second and try that out. If I can get this anywhere near the same speed as my Maker Select back there, which is running pretty fast, I'll be super happy. I don't know if I can get it to go that fast or not. I'm gonna jack these print speeds up by about five millimeters per second, print another cube, and I'll get back with you. So I'm on my third cube so far. This would be number one, that's number two, that's number three. I'm not seeing any layer shifts yet, and I have increased, or I have decreased my print time from one hour and three minutes all the way down to 51 minutes. So I've decreased my print time quite a bit. Sides are looking pretty good. They're looking just fine. There's no layer shifts. 
The one thing that I am starting to see, if you can see that between uh, the first one and the second one, I don't know if you can see that, but the top surface is actually quite a bit more rough. So I think I may keep increasing the speed everywhere else, but I might actually reduce the top speed back down to uh, this top speed. The top speed on this one was 15 millimeters per second. And the top speed on this one, or the speed for the top layer on this one, was uh, 20 millimeters per second. In the middle, it's a 17.5, and it's actually kind of rough as well. So I think I might drop that top layer speed back down to 15 millimeters per second. The Prusa actually prints top and bottom speed pretty slow. So, I don't remember exactly what the speeds are on the Prusa, but it's pretty slow. So that might be a good idea to slow that down. Uh, that's gonna mess with my print times a little bit, which I've shaved quite a bit, but I'm actually gonna continue to ratchet up the speed on the sides here until I actually start to see problems, see what kind of issues I get into. These edges, they absolutely look exactly the same. Uh, even though the outer wall speed has gone from um, 15 millimeters per second on this one to 20 millimeters per second on that one. So hopefully I'll be able to keep those looking good and get some more speed out of it. I'm hoping to once, once again get this up near 60 millimeters per second for your base speed or even higher. I don't know. Let's try some more cubes. So I've done actually quite a bit of printing here and I've actually done seven cubes that you can see here. They all look really good. I did in fact end up keeping the top layer the same speed on all of them. Um, that was 15 millimeters per second. So they're nice and smooth. They look fantastic uh, as far as a 0.6 millimeter nozzle goes. The sides look pretty good. I didn't get any layer shifts. I actually did get the speed on number seven up to a print speed of 65 millimeters per second with an outer of 32 and a half, an inner of 65 of course, top and bottom of 15 like I just said. I kept that at 15 which I may raise out a little bit for larger items. I don't know. It's just that this one here that had uh, a faster top layer speed. The top kind of started to get a little bit funky, but the six and seven, actually the six was at 60 millimeters per second print speed and the seven was at 65. And they actually both took 45 minutes to print. So I am assuming because they didn't change at all when I raised the speeds quite a bit. So each one of these actually dropped off about five minutes worth of print time except these two are identical on the print time. I'm assuming that there's probably a maximum speed in the printer's firmware that I would have to actually adjust the firmware to get around. So I'm not going to do that for this particular video. But um, so I'm assuming that the number seven, even though it was set for 65 millimeters per second, it printed pretty much at 60. Um, so this one right here, uh, which is what I've been printing at lately, took 45 minutes to print. Its speed was 60 millimeters per second overall. Its infill was 55. Outer perimeter was 30. Top layer was 15. Initial layer was 30. I got travel at 60. And I, of course I left my acceleration at 500 and my jerk at two. Uh, it looks fantastic. It looks just as good as any of the others. And it saved me quite a bit of time. So these two actually did end up printing exactly the same speed as far as I can tell. They took almost identical time to print, even though I had raised it quite a bit and that had changed things throughout the series. It just didn't change anything here. So I do think I'm dealing with a maximum speed in the firmware on this. I'll have to research that and see if there is actually a maximum speed around 60 millimeters per second that's programmed in there. I also maybe could raise the outer speed a little bit. Um, 30 is not super fast. I mean, maybe, maybe I could get decent outer layers or outer perimeters with, you know, 35 or 40. 
I don't know, the other printers seem to print it about 30 on the um, per outer perimeter, so maybe I won't change that, I don't know. This is actually a pretty good result. So as far as all of these blocks go, they did their job. I've got a bunch of blocks done. Um, this is actually the one speed that I'm going with. So this block, block is at, this is your regular calibration cube. It is printed at 150% size wise. It took 45 minutes to print with a 0.6 nozzle. I think that's a pretty good speed. This size on any of my other printers, and granted my other printers have a 0.4 nozzle on them, but um, they would take longer than this to print. They would take longer than 45 minutes to print a cube this size, um, I think. So a couple other things that I printed testing this out. I got my hands on some new filament that I didn't, I'm not really going to review or anything. I just liked the color for a project that I'm working on. Uh, this Benchy was printed at those same top speeds on the Monster. This is a, once again, 150% in size uh, standard Benchy. And this print took two hours and 31 minutes to print. And this exact same size Benchy on my Maker Select, the estimate is well over three hours for this size Benchy. So I think that the Monster D9 is doing a pretty good job. But what about that tray that we talked about earlier? So I now have two of these trays. Uh, this smaller one is designed to fit inside the bigger one for storage. This is the one that took well over 24 hours to print. I think it was closer to 26 and a half hours to print at the regular speeds. This bigger one that was printed at the higher speeds took right around 18 hours to print. So I literally, in doing these tests and these print speed adjustments, I have reduced my print time by a good 30% because uh, this one's actually bigger than, than the original. So by all my calculations with the calibration cubes, I have cut a full third off of my print times, uh, speeding this back up to regular print speeds. So with the modifications that I've done, and especially when I get a new print head on there, I may seriously look at overriding the maximum print speed in the firmware to get stuff like this to print even faster. Uh, I can imagine that as well as this printer did up to 60 millimeters per second, that it might do just fine up near 80 millimeters per second uh, for some aspects of the print. Probably not bottom and top layer and probably not the exterior walls, but for things like infill and those kinds of things, it seems like the printer will be able to handle it. So. As far as all my modifications go, I'm actually pretty happy with this. This has cut my print speed down considerably. And the quality is still really good. This is really nice quality print with a 0.6 nozzle. It's, I don't know how well you can see any of that on the camera. Uh, a lot of glare there, but it's really smooth. It's really even. The walls are very nice. The layer lines are regular and there's no serious gaps in it, which is one of the problems that I had with this particular printer printing large things before, is that the layers would create gaps and there was just too much flex in it, too much movement, that kind of stuff. So, uh, so far, as far as the Monster D9 goes, I'm looking good. I think the print speeds are getting there and the print quality is getting there. I have a few more modifications to do, so if you stick around and pay attention to Grim 3D, they'll be coming at you. Remember, smack that subscribe button down below, leave a comment if you like, just keep it civil, ring the bell, we'll see you out there.